So how many how many years were you with Model City? And what was your City. highest job level? That urban, urban planner, planner three, whatever it was. Right. Uh, I was there for four years. And the interesting thing was, Irwin saw to it that we were making more than like positions in the regular city corporate fund. And there were there were people who hated Irwin as it was, you know, aldermen and committeemen, and others, because he was an arrogant, you know, he was a character, and and he was arrogant. He was smart, and he knew it, and he let you know it. So, you know, all kinds of people disliked him, and we were making more money than like titles in the regular city government. So. Somebody, you know, said, go and do desk audits on these people. So they sent out folks from the budget office and the mm -hmm. personnel department to do desk audits on us to see what are they doing over there that they're making all this money. Irwin's argument was that we had no job protection. We were in jobs that were funded annually and uh, authorized only every three years. So we needed to make more money for the same work. Uh, somebody from the budget office, the city budget office, did my desk audit. And they uh, subsequently recruited me to the city budget office. Ah. At the time, the city budget office was a division of the mayor's office. It wasn't a freestanding department like it is now. It was a division of the mayor's office. So I got recruited to the city budget office. And so who was the individual who identified you? I can't remember, can't remember. his name. Right. Uh, but he was there. He worked for Ed, but Ed Bedore was the budget director. And what year again is this? That would be 73. 73. Uh, and I, you know, I interviewed with Ed Bedore, and then because it was a division of the mayor's office, I had to go and interview with the mayor. So what was that first meeting like? Uh, well, it was interesting, you know, I went traipsing over there. I had tried to find, this is the, the era of the mini skirt. You know, I had tried to find the longest skirt I had. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, this after all, it, it was sort of a cross between meeting the president and the pope. You know? <laughs> I had to go, and, and, and you know, I'd never met the mayor before. I'd been working in city, in some part of city government for years, but, and, I, you know, I was a little minion. I never met the mayor. So I had to go over to the mayor's office for my meeting with the mayor. But the day I went over to meet the mayor, he was distracted because one of the stalwart black aldermen, I think it was Claude Holman, died that day. Uh -huh. So, you know, he was like, you know, and there was all this coming and going in the mayor's office and everybody was all upset. Uh, but I, I went in to meet him and he, he just said, ah, oh, yes, and you're who, <laughs> you know. Like, right. And I told him who I was, and he said, uh, you want this job? And I was, what am I going to say, no? Yes, I want this job. He said, well, will you make more money than make? Oh, yeah, hell, that's why I'm taking the job, you know. Right. So make more than I'm making now. And he said, fine, and off I went. And I, uh, I went in, I was... What they recruited me for was a new title they have in the budget office called Federal Grants Coordinator. Uh, so you're on the other side <laughs> now of the federal grant stream. Right. I, the, the budget office, people don't realize the, the executive budget function is a relatively new function in city government. If city government goes back to 1837, there wasn't an executive budget function until Daley came in in 1955. He created a budget office. 
previously the finance committee of the city council had prepared the budget mm -hmm. and then the entire council voted on the budget but there was no executive budget function. Daly created that. And you had, so you've only had a budget office since 1955. So that budget office prepares a budget, it's submitted to the finance committee, committee. and then that's presented to the council as a exactly. whole. Exactly. The mayor executes it. Right, right. And, and the budget office is the one who watches over it, maintains it, right. makes sure departments stay on course. And the other thing, and, and this isn't true across the country, but it's true in Chicago, uh, the budget office, not the personnel department, or whatever it's called from year to year, they maintain something called position control because for the corporate fund, which is the operating fund of the city, 85% of the budget is people. Right. The only way you control that budget is to control the people. Who's on the payroll, what are they getting paid, promotions, all of that stuff. And that is called position control. That's located in the budget office. Uh. They have a whole unit that does nothing but maintain all those positions. And they have probably one of the best position control systems in the country. Yeah. When I went to DC, I never could understand, I worked for the, the city of DC. They never could figure out how many people they had on the payroll, where they were, what they were getting paid, anything. And so, so that would have been another innovation of the late Mayor Daley's administration mm -hmm. because that was a function of the budget department that he created, right. the but budget the, office that yeah, he created. But there had always been some form of position control because if you have a patronage system, right. you've got to know who the people are, where they are, what they're making, when they got the last upgrade, when they got the last promotion. I, I, you can't run a patronage system without a good position control system. Right. And, you know, we weren't, position control in Chicago was not about good personnel administration. It was about patronage, you know. But it was a really good system. system. Yeah. Because you, you knew dollars and cents, what everyone was making. And, and you knew the history. I mean, you, if you told me Joe Blow's name and if you gave me his SSN, I could tell you every single thing about Joe Blow from the day he hit the city of Chicago now, till he retired. Now, was that written down somewhere? Or how, how would you know that? Because we had these little forms. Right. And in order for you to make any kind of a personnel move, you had to have this little form filled out. And we kept those on file. And in fact, we had an assistant budget director, Ed Zawilla. He was out of, he wasn't out of Burke's ward. I forget whose ward he was out of. Anyway, he was, he was chief in charge of position control and he would remind the new budget tiers as they came in, ah, that's a legal document, take care of that. Take you know? care of that. <laughs> yes, and they stored all of, they were little half sheets. Do, do you have any idea of where they wound up? Who? Well, where they, they were all sent to the infamous, ultimately, uh, they were sent to the infamous storage. And then, you know, as computers became more and more common, all of that stuff got uh, computerized. Yeah. Now, um, here you are, you were insulated from political Previously. interference under the Hatch Act, uh, Dr. Irwin France. You're now working in a uh, high pressure 
office where politics has its rules. Uh, well, it, but just getting the job, you know, I was so naive. I thought that this would be just like the other jobs I'd get got. You know, that I would just, you know, I'd make applications. Somebody would interview me, and hey, right. I'd get a job. I went to, Ed Bedore told me, he said, look, you have to, to go and get a letter. I'm like, a letter? What letter? Where? <laughs> you know, I don't know from letter. They sent me to see my committeeman. Who, who was? Benny Stewart, a name that absolutely nobody remembers. Uh, but he was the alderman and committeeman of the ward I lived in. I, at the time, where I lived was the 21st Ward. I lived in West Chesterfield. Mm -hmm. So I went, I called up. They said, well, call up and find out when ward night is. You know, I didn't know from ward night. You know, I didn't know that all, all of the aldermen and committeemen had these ward nights. So I called up. They gave me the phone number. I called up. I got an appointment. I went traipsing over to this office on, uh, it was on Halstead. And all ward offices look alike. Somewhere out there, there is a interior <laughs> decorator who specializes in ward offices. They have this ersatz wood paneling, you know, these plastic stack em chairs. They all look alike. There's, I've never been in a ward office that didn't look like every other ward office I've been in. So I, I went out to see Benny Stewart, and he, he, was, he was not happy because it was clear that he, it didn't really matter what he thought. I was coming from the hall and from the 11th Ward crowd. Ed Bedore was 11th Ward, you know. I was gonna have to get a letter of recommendation, whether he liked it or not. So I sat down, you know, and, you know, I was not, I was part of that 60s group. I wasn't, you know, I was halfway anti-machine. You know, I wasn't crazy. You know, I wasn't a Billy Singer type. But I, you know, I wasn't particularly supportive. He knew I was never going to go knocking on doors. I, you know, he knew. And he ranted and railed about you young people with these college degrees, you don't understand, and yada, yada, yada. But he gave me my letter. You know? <laughs> and did you ever see him again? Only in council meetings. I, right. I never, you know. I, I got a letter from the 21st Ward. But if I was tied to anything, though I never had to do any work for them either, I was tied to the 11th. I mean, my clout was at the door. It wasn't Benny Stewart, right. God knows, you know, because uh, he didn't have any clout anyway. But I, I took my letter. Uh, the, the budget office was in room 604, which was at the north end of the sixth floor of City Hall. It was next to what used to be the fire alarm office. Fire alarm office is now, of course, out at the, uh, the big emergency center. center. Yeah. yeah. But there was a fire, the north side fire alarm office was on the sixth floor of City Hall. Then you had the budget office, and then you had the infamous room 603. 603 didn't even have a sign on the door. All it had on its door was 603. That was a patronage office. So.